Hello and welcome to the the tenth episode on the Holy Spirit, the podcast. We've been looking at the Holy Spirit. This is so relevant for today. I encourage you again, like I say every week, listen to previous podcasts. Put this all together so you can really be a Christian in the Holy Spirit with power and victory. It's great to be born again and get baptized before the church and acknowledge your Christianity and to be part of the family of God. But I want to talk to you today about what does it mean to live in the Spirit and how do you go about doing that? And because as we bring this to a climax, I feel like it's so important that you really have practical Christianity, not just some kind of, you know, doctrine, although doctrine is important, but that you are living out that doctrine. So let's look at Romans chapter 8 and verse 14. For as many as are led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God. For you have not received the spirit of bondage again to fear, but you have received the spirit of adoption, whereby you cry out, Abba, Father. And the Spirit himself bears witness with our spirit that we are children of God. So you have this inner witness. You know on the inside that you are a child of God. You understand the, the concepts, the precepts, you're part of the new creation. He's breathed on you. You're born of the Holy Spirit from above. You've been baptized in the Holy Spirit and power. You have a sound mind, and you want to live the life. And that's really, I've been a Christian for 45 years. I think, well, maybe about 47. I mean, I was raised in the church, but I really accepted the Lord when I was 20 uh, in college. And, and God has done a marvelous work over the years. And I, I've made a few mistakes. Uh, there was a few bumps on the road. But God used it all to always teach me because I always would go back. to me. you ever see that, that balloon that looks like a clown that goes down <laughs> and comes back up? That's the way I see it. Like I've been down, but no, a good man gets back up again and throws off the sin and the weight that does be set him. And he reaches for the prize, the mark, the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. But this is the key to living the life. And that is for as many as are led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God. Now, I want to read to you from the book of Matthew in chapter 12, in verse number 33, because what it does is it kind of talks about, you know, either you're in or you're out. It says, you know, either make the tree good and the fruit good, or else make the tree corrupt and the fruit corrupt, for the tree is known by its fruit. If you're led by the lusts of your flesh, if you're led by the devil telling you to do wrong things, if, if you're led by the world and you want the pride of life and everybody to know how great you are, that's bad fruit. But if you are led by the Spirit, by the Father of God, a Father of God, where you cry, Abba, Father, I want to please God, I want to live for you, and, and you are loving and kind, and people can tell. People can tell. You, you can talk Christianity and not be doing it. I've had people do that to me, and it makes me cringe on the inside when they are talking Christianity, and, I, and the life, they're not, they're not living it. And I feel sorry for them, and I pray for them, because I, in my heart, I give them the benefit of the doubt. I believe the best of all men. Maybe they're trying to be Christians. But this is the very key that I want to leave with you with as we you know, conclude this series on the Holy Spirit, that you can have a daily relationship with the Spirit, with the Holy Spirit of God, and your Spirit will bear witness, and He will lead you. And it's just as supernatural as having a vision of Jesus or angels to have the Holy Spirit witness into your Spirit, directing you and guiding you. And there's usually three principles that go along with this being led by the Holy Spirit. Number one, it's got to be in line with the Word of God. If what you're doing is not in line with the Word of God, admit it, quit it, stop it. So when you have it in line with the Word, and then there should be this witness, see, that, that the Holy Spirit, witness, yes, proceed, go. And I really pray about this. And if, if God's saying no, I say no. But if on the inside they're saying, okay, proceed, then the other thing should be that the circumstances line up, that you don't force it into being. But all of a sudden it's like, there it is, and that's the way. So if you were led by the Spirit, you are a son of God, your spirit bears witness, your, your Father God is there, you, you don't have fear and bondage and all that, but you have this life in Christ, life in the Spirit, you walk in the Spirit. And I'm telling you, it's a great life. I've had a wonderful life. Uh, I know people that thought they had a wonderful life by doing their own thing and getting involved in things they shouldn't have. And it's not, it doesn't end well. 
that the fruit are bad, they're corrupt. But when the person has really sought to live a life for God, I'm telling you, the fruit are good. They're, they're precious. They're, they're excellent fruit. And I really am grateful for how God has allowed me all my life, whether it's patients or parishioners, to serve people, to, to be zealous for good works. And I had this one incident that really touched me, and I really remember it. I was pastoring a, a large church in Melvindale. We had a remodeled Kmart's, and I would always greet the people at the door, and, you know, I mean, as they left. And this woman came up to my door, and she said, I ride the bus with this other member of the church. She wasn't a member of the church. And we got to talking, and she told me where she went to church. And then she told me about you. And she said, that's got to be my mother's visiting nurse, Frank Julian. <laughs> and she said, I had to come and see you. And so she came to my door and stood there and just told me how much her mother loved me and how she loved me caring for her mother and how much it meant to her. And I didn't remember her. I mean, this is over 40. I've had a lot of patients and parishioners over the years. And I grieved because I wish I would have. But God was showing me something. You know, when we stand before him on the judgment day, we're not going to say, oh, I did this and that and that. No, no, no. We'll say, when did I visit you? When did I feed you? When did I, when did I clothe you? And then he will recount. And I believe he's going to recount these things to me. And I am so grateful, I really am, that by the grace of God, I've chosen to walk in the Spirit and live in the Spirit and, and love people. And I want to encourage you, and that's what I'm going to pray for you for today, is that you will have this greater witness inside of you to know the direction that you should walk out in your life. So, Father, in the name of Jesus, by the Spirit of God, I ask you to show them exactly what you want them to do. May they walk in the Spirit and live in the Spirit. And may they bear good fruit so that on that last day they will hear all the good fruit recounted to them of their life. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. Oh, this has been a wonderful series. Tune in next week. I, I believe we're going to have a great series for you that you won't want to miss. And tell a friend about the program. Write me at frankjulian5 at gmail.com. And until next week, God bless you. Bye for now. On behalf of Frank Julian Ministries, we want to say thank you so much for listening. We upload podcasts every Thursday on Roku, YouTube, and audio podcasts, so make sure you subscribe so you don't miss out. If you need prayers or are seeking a prayer community, we're here for you. Come join us on our Facebook page, Love, Prayers, and Healing Podcasts with Pastor Frank. See you next week.